sir. Or a blackguard and a scoundrel. Why, thank you, sir. I quite agree. And one of the very best. Kronwitz, Art von Kronwitz, at your service, sir. Darren McGavin and Mickey Rooney star in Donovan's Kid. A pair of charming con men find the law isn't their only problem. What's that? Use your freight and a couple of passengers. Little girl's been kidnapped. They got a kid with them? Not this trip. It's a posse. They'll be searching the stage. It's a delightfully shady saga of law and disorder. Yes, there's havoc created in turn-of-the-century San Francisco when these two quick-thinking con men come to town to discover that one of them is the father of a 13-year-old larrikin who's better at making trouble than the con artists are at getting out of it. Donovan's Kid, Sunday night at the later time of 7 o'clock in the wonderful world of Disney. Yeah, with a screen chanting adventure story. Disney's Peter Pan with Tinkerbell, Captain Hook, and all the other marvelous characters in Never Never Land. See Walt Disney's Peter Pan, rated G. Peter Pan, rated G, is now showing at Cinema One. feeling that we had best change our plans. I think Reno is going to be warm for quite a spell. We could go to San Francisco for a while till things cool off. Huh? I got a sister there. A sister I haven't seen in ten years. Her name's Charity. get rid of it. Now, what's going on here? Where are you going? Oh, I'm on my way to teach school in a little town called Greenbush. Uh, Tim, this is ridiculous. We haven't seen each other in ten years, and I've got a train... The rent pay up until the first of the month. 
You're welcome to make do without me. Good. But you've got to promise to come visit me in Greenbush. Oh. We've got a lot to talk about, you and I. I will, I will. I promise, promise. I, I, I've got to run. I mean, my cab is waiting. I'm going to miss my train. And I never expected to see you back. I never expected to be back. After Grace and I broke up, San Francisco was a black and dirty word for me. Oh, no. Kim, don't blame Grace too much. That uncle of hers that broke the two of you up, uh, that and all their money. You have my word on it. She tried her best to reach you. We both did after your child Jamie was born. Officer? It's that Jamie of yours again, ma'am. The second time this week. Now, a complaint is being filed. I'll take care of this, Grace. What's the child done this time? Well, Jamie is upstairs. I I'm sure you must be mistaken, officer. Very well, Grace. If you're so sure, ask Jamie down here. Mother? I don't quite understand. I thought we might have one of our little talks about it. In just a moment, dear. I uh, believe you've made a mistake, officer. Yes, ma'am, I have. I should have run faster. Good day to you. Good day, sir. You can close the book, Jennifer. It served its purpose. You may fool your mother, but you've never fooled me. Slipping in and out of this house like a thief in the night into mischief with every little hoodlum in San Francisco. Henry... She belongs in Miss Haddon's finishing school in Boston, where she can't hide behind your skirts. And wear some of her own, I might add. It's going to be quite a challenge turning her into a proper young lady. Next semester is none too soon to start. You hear me, Jennifer? I won't go. I'll have respect, not insolence. Now, what's your answer? I'm not going, sir. Can't we discuss this later on, Henry? There's nothing to discuss, Grace. My mind's made up. By the first of the month, Jennifer will be in finishing school. Timothy, you're not noted for being closed mouth. That uh, marriage that you didn't tell me about, Hurt must have run pretty deep. We were very, very much in love. Were, I still am. I've had to block it out of my mind to keep from going mad over the years. Not that it's any of my business, dear friend. No matter, it's an old story. Poor but ambitious sailor from Dockside runs off with rich and very beautiful girl. Henry Carpenter, that's her uncle, had to get rid of me. He arranged with one of his partners to frame me in a swindle. I had to leave town. Tim, have you ever thought about leaving sleeping dogs lie? Oh, I have to see my son first. And when I go into that house, I'm going in in style. 
My son will see me as a gentleman. I'll have no pity from him. A condescension from the carpenters. Now, Tim, you know that I am not against vulgar display. But I must remind you that our funds are running terribly low. And this, uh, partner. Uh, oh, Rumford, Silas Rumford. Silas Rumford. He sounds like a perfect mark for one of our little charades. It will be my pleasure, Count von Kramwitz. Ach. <laughs> we'll pull the old shipping insurance fraud on him. And we'll double it back. Rumford will recognize it as a swindle the minute he hears it. <laughs> and pay you handsomely to double-cross me, Captain Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> Kronwitz, Art von Kronwitz, at your service, sir. Well, what can I do for you? I am here on a matter of the utmost discretion. I believe you know how this has to be handled. And take two men with you. Yes, sir. Have a chair. Ah. My mission here is to ask you if you have a boat, a big boat of ample cargo space, ready to leave tomorrow night. Oh, that's not possible. <laughs> not possible? Huh. I was told that you dealt in this type of transaction. Obviously, I've uh, been misinformed. Uh, what do you need the ship for? My dear sir, if it were possible for me to tell you of my plans, it would be just as impossible to pay you amply for your discretion. And how much is that? Five thousand dollars in gold. Only if our little transaction is kept completely out of the records. And I must choose the crew, the master of the ship, Captain Higgins can be found at this very moment at the hook and net. A one-eyed brigand of dubious character, but an able seaman. Well, I think we can get you what you're looking for, Count. That's why I'm here. That and gold. Gold. Captain, will you join me? Ah, gold, eh? What did you want to talk about, eh? Well, Captain, though we've never met, we have a mutual employer. Eh? Count von Krumwitz. Ah, yes, we've met. He's overpaying me to get a ship for him on the sly. This morning, after he left my office, he went directly to an insurance company where I have friends. Captain, it's one of the oldest dodges on the waterfront. The ship will be run aground, the cargo secretly sold, and the insurance collected. Well, now, wait a minute, my lad. What, is, what do you take me for? Oh, no, please, Captain. No offense. But you and me were seafaring men. I propose that we form a partnership and divide the Count's share. Well... What's he paying you? Well, he's... he's, he's uh... He's paying me 25%. 25%? Pay, pay, pay well, I'll double that. Uh, eh? I'll double that. Double it? Oh. All you have to do is bring that ship to a snug harbor of mine. probably have a gang of cutthroats waiting there with guns and knives and clubs waiting for me, eh? No, no, nothing doing. No, Captain Higgins, uh, he plays the fool for no man. And Silas Rumford's word is his bond, sir. <laughs> uh, Captain, here's a little something on accounts. Don't mind if I look at it, do you? 
had lead in my hands before, but now. Yes? I've come to see Mrs. Donovan. There is no Mrs. Donovan here. Mrs. Grace Donovan? Oh, you must be Miss Grace Carpenter. Yes. May I have your hat? Whom shall I say is calling? Mr. Donovan. Wait here, please. Miss Carpenter. friend of Jamie's? I am Jamie. Jamie Carpenter. You're Jamie? Frontier peril. That girl has Donovan's blood in her veins, all right. I know. I see it every time I look into her eyes. She calls herself Jamie Carpenter. Has she ever heard my name? No. Why? Uncle Henry. I never want to hear the name Donovan mentioned in this house again, eh? Tim, you must believe me. I... I fought him as long as I could, but we heard that you had died in New York. Died? Yes. I wrote you every week for a year. You never answered. I never got them. Henry. Tim, I, I finally had to give in. And you allowed Henry to have our marriage in all of them? Oh, great. No, Tim, please. Don't start again. We hurt ourselves too much in the past. It, it's done with. It's not done with, Grace. I see it in your eyes. I heard it in your voice the minute you walked in here. It's no more over for you than it is for me. Uh, Tim, my feelings don't matter. I, I, I can't change them, but oh, it has to be over with. You and I could never live in peace together. Not then, not now, not ever. Oh, I'm truly sorry, Tim. So am I, girl. So am I. Why 
One more thing. Yes? Grace, is it possible that you and Jamie and I could slip away for a little family dinner together before I leave? I have an even better idea. We will have dinner here. Uncle Henry is in Sacramento and won't be back until tomorrow. Well, after I left New York, I went to Ireland, um, Italy, Greece, Alexandria, India, all around the world. Every port I could find a ship for. Wish I could travel like that. Oh, you will, Jamie, you will. I mean, after all, life is nothing but a journey. I watched them drive the Golden Spike and left the next morning for Creed, Colorado. What'd you do in Colorado, Mr. Donovan? Well, for a while there, I was a deputy to uh, Bat Masterson. The real Bat Masterson? The one and only. Grace, you'll never believe the land that I staked out. Not another dream ranch. No, 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 this is the real thing. No, 160 acres of the grandest land in the Oklahoma Territory. Oh, it's magnificent. I would have thought you'd had your fill of rainbows and ranches. They disappear when you get too close to them. Not always, girl. Would you like some more coffee? No. No, thank you. Uh, Frida, would you please bring the brandy into the living room? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. When will you be going to Virginia City? I'll be leaving on the morning stage, I'm afraid. What are you going to be doing in Virginia City? Search for a fortune in silver, my dear. In the Comstock load. Grace? Now, Leland and I decide to come back a day early. Donovan. The very same, sir. I never seem to learn, Mr. Donovan, not to turn my back on you. I'll never make that mistake with you, Mr. Carpenter. Not a second time. This is Mr. Leland Ralston. Mr. Donovan. Grace. I'm sure that Grace has told you that she and Mr. Ralston are engaged to be married. I know, as a matter of fact, uh, she had not mentioned it. Well, today has been full of surprises. I assume, sir, that you are a business associate of Mr. Carpenter's. Well, I hope to be. Oh, yes, keeping it all in the family, are you? Good evening to you, Jamie. Do you have to leave? I'm afraid I have no choice, Jamie. You run along, Jennifer. It's past your bedtime. And take that hat off in the house. Are you going to come back? I don't know. I'll try. But if I can, you take very good care of yourself. And of your mother. I'll always remember you, Jamie. Jennifer! Tim, you must try to understand. What, Grace? Understand what? You're not a child anymore. You've got to make your own decisions. If that's what you want, well and fine. If it isn't, then this is your last chance to be your own woman. Grace, you have company. It's easier than you think, Grace. All you have to do is say no. Sit down, will you? You're as nervous as a cat. Sir, could you hurry that along? We can, friend, but these horses ain't like humans. They like to take their time when they drink it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of troubles, Tim, what's the matter with you? You haven't spoke a word since we left San Francisco. Oh, it's Grace. 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 Henry still has her under his thumb. Would you believe he's already chosen a new husband for her? <laughs> Nothing's changed. You just got a daughter instead of a son that you thought you had. Yeah, and he's trying to run her life, too. 
He's shipping her off to some high society, finishing school in Boston. Ah, that'll finish her. It's a terrible, terrible thing that Henry Carpenter's doing to that grand little girl. Terrible. <sighs> oh, I, I wish you'd met her, really. Oh, she's a fine, intelligent, spunky, bright, aggressive little girl. I tell you, I can see her face in front of me now. Jamie, Jamie. Jamie? Jamie! That's all we need. What are you doing here? I'm going with you. Well, no, no, honey, you can't. You know. Ready to go? Go with the judge. You're installing now. Get in the stage. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, could you tell me when the next stage will be going back to San Francisco? You passed it this morning. Oh. But there is another one next week. Now, seeing as though you're in such a hurry, why don't you just get in? Jamie, this is uh, Mr. Bailey. How do you do? How do you do? Does anybody know you're gone? You mean you just sneaked out of the yeah. house and stowed away on the stage? Ah, yeah. Ah, ah. We'll stop at the next station and put you in the westbound. No, not if you want to spend a dry week in the desert, you won't. A week? Her poor mother's going to be half worried out of her mind. I've got to talk to her. Don't you see, Uncle Tim? I've got no choice. Just like you said when you walked out yesterday. I'll do anything to keep from being sent away to some stuck-up school. But, but you don't understand, Jamie. You see, they'll accuse me of kidnapping you. I understand, all right. <clears throat> oh, no, Jamie, you wouldn't. I told you, I'll do anything. Well, we'll all end up in jail. It's better than Miss Haddon's finishing school for young ladies. A couple of passengers. The little girl's been kidnapped. They got a kid with them? Not this trip. It's a posse. Posse. They'll be searching the stage. We'll have a look. Check the box in the top, Jake. Right. Begging your pardon, sir, but please remove your hat, Sheriff. What's going on here? Well, this is me, Uncle William. We're on our way to attend the funeral of his brother, my pa. <gasps> yes, you who passed the Great Divide last week. What's your name? Uh, Slope, sir. Will Slope, uh, my uh, Uncle William. <gasps> and where are you from? Uh, Virginia City, sir. Uh, you see, his brother, my pa, got uh, killed, drowned in a terrible mine accident. Oh, it was awful down there in the dark, gurgling and gaggling for the air, you know. It was a terrible thing. You may have heard of it. No. <laughs> Nothing up here, Sheriff. <laughs> okay, Jake. Don't look like we'll spit the reward this trip. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you to your grief. Oh, bless you, Sheriff. Bless, bless your heart. Bless you. Yes. <laughs> Take it away, Pete! Yeah, get him up there! Get him up! Yeah. Well, we better check the train out to Sonora. Oh, great, Mr. Bailey. Can you cry any time you want to? Almost any time, yes, Jamie. Today I have more reason than ever to want to cry. <laughs> uh, we'll have to get off. We'll have to get off of that at the next station. Huh? I told you, Uncle Tim, I'm not going back to San Francisco. San Francisco? San Francisco would be the last place you'd be going back to, Jamie. You know, you're right. Yes, we'll have to get off before the next station. Huh? And then we'd better hide out, too, until those bounty hunters cool off. Huh? All right. All right. Driver! Mr. Bailey. Two horses, Mr. Donovan. Hide in the bushes, Jamie. You bet, Uncle Tim. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Nice Howdy. day for a ride. 
Howdy, Howdy men. How are you? Sure beats walking. Well, <laughs> that's right to the point, ain't it? <laughs> My friend and I here, we're interested in purchasing some horse flesh. <laughs> well, there's a ranch ten miles back yonder. Maybe they'll sell you a horse. We're headed the other direction. Yeah, well, we'd be willing to go as high as uh, $10 for one of your horses. <laughs> well, we might go as high as $15. You circus folks. Oh, that's uh, just a little pet of mine. Uh, Tim, uh, I think we have more than 10 miles to be going on yeah. today yet, so I, I think perhaps we ought to... Hey, just a second there. That's a mighty fine looking watch you got there. Thank you, sir. $20? The watch. I think my brother's interested in your friend's watch. Might even get him to change his mind. You mean trade this fine gold uh, timepiece here for one of those old horses? Why, it's worth more uh, than $100. <laughs> it's rock bottom. Well, suit yourself. You're the one that's stranded, not me. You bet. Well, now, gentlemen, 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 just, just a minute. <laughs> just a minute. Now, you both look like sporting gentlemen to me. We'll match for it. Now, if you win the toss, you get to keep the solid gold watch. Oh. Yeah, no, on the other hand, if we win the toss, then we get both horses. The watch. And $20. Huh? Oh, well, I, I well, don't think so. Oh, no, that's, uh... Oh, my, you certainly do drive a very, a very hard bargain, sir. I, uh, I, I don't think so. It's, it's, your, it's your watch, Mr. Bates. Well, well what do you uh, think? It's been in the family for a long... What, uh... Oh, right, really? Huh. All right. We'll match for it, gentlemen. Yeah, we're going to use my coin. And we'll flip. No, uh, hold on, wait a minute. If, if you're going to use your coin, then we do the flipping. Oh, that's where no, no. we're going to use our own. If you use your coin, why is it only fair? Wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me settle this whole Don't thing go. fairly, if I may. We'll let the monkey flip. We'll use your coin, and we'll call it. Oh, well, wait a minute. Watch, gentlemen. gentlemen, it's just a monkey. <laughs> Mr. Bailey. Why not? All right, Caliban, do your stuff. Flip it. Heads. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow I'll write Grace and tell her to meet us here. Uh, she'll never find us out here in the Tulis. No, no, no. There's a there's a little Mexican uh, village named Dos Rios here. They've probably never even heard of the kidnapping. Shh. I'm getting hungry. What are we going to eat? Oh, oh, what are we going to eat? Whatever Mother Nature provides, my dear. Come and I'll show you how to survive in the Wild West. <laughs> Careful, so you don't scare the fish. There's one right down there. See it? Ooh. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, 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 be careful. I got the other one. Now, you take this one. Now, 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 watch out, because water makes it appear to be where it isn't. See? Watch out for distortion, all right? Now, one, two, three. Jamie, are you all right? Here. Come on. That's it. You all right? Yeah. All right. Are you sure? Let me see. Let me see. I'm fine. Yeah, you okay? Yeah, you have to admire the courage of Jamie. Uh, you haven't heard a whimper out of her all day. It's not her courage that I'm challenging. It's her presence. She doesn't belong out here in the wilderness. She's like a fish out of water. Oh, well, look at her there. She's wonderful. Tim, you said you were going to write her mother. Huh? Well, yeah. Well, uh, I guess there's no sense in putting it off, is there? Nope. But I'm getting awful used to having her around. Sorry, senor. The senora's not here yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll check back tomorrow. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. But if she comes, I'll send a niño to your camp. Easy. Adios. Adios, senor. Kings. Two jacks and two fives. <laughs> now, the first thing you want to learn about poker is you don't only study your cards, you study your opponent. Poker is not only a game of luck, it's a game of skill. Well, there's no sign of grace at all. She should have been here by this time. Hmm. Did you know my father very well, Uncle Tim? Your father, Jamie, did I... did I know him well? Yeah, yeah, yes, you could, you could say that. Yeah. What was he like? Uh... Well, that, that, uh... That all depends, I guess, on, on who you ask. I guess, uh, personally, I thought he was a bit of all right, you know? And, uh, certainly no worse than the next man. He enjoyed a, a good game and a, a joke and a bit of a drink. As, as a matter of fact, some people thought he had a great deal of Irish charm. <laughs> you think I would have liked him? Uh, uh, I think you would have liked him, Jane. I didn't know you knew him, too. Well, I, I knew him uh, only slightly. But that part about the Irish charm that your Uncle Tim was telling you about, I'm not sure. But he was a good man to have on your side in a fight. I think he'd have been proud of him. Yes, and he would have liked you, Jamie, very much. Oh, I can guarantee you that. Hide in the bushes, go on. You, you don't think we'd be fool enough to keep her here, do you? No. How'd you boys find us? Followed you from Dos Rios. You think Henry Carpenter would be fool enough not to have the mail watched? We want the girl, Donovan. Well, you read the mail. Ah, the girl's mother is the only one who gets the girl. Oh, now, Mr. Donovan. And... Oh! Watch him. Oh. Oh, that was the most impolite thing to do. Yeah. Oh. You know, uh, this this reminds me of our uh, our, uh, our carnival days, Mr. Uh, fairly, Bailey. Fairly reminiscent, yes. I think a most unappreciative audience. I fear we're in big trouble, Tim. Yes, I think so. Uh, oh, uh, that's far enough. Now, look, if you let me go, I'll tell you where the girl is. Oh, no, you wouldn't do that. Yes. Oh, you vermin, you. Hey, Rube! <laughs> up all your chances, Donovan. I want that girl now. Uh -huh. Jamie, you all right? Huh? You yeah. okay? Can you catch your breath? Yeah. Okay, good girl. <laughs> Uh, look at her, Timothy. She catches on real fast, the horse, I mean. Oh, oh to everything, too. Mm. Hey, look! Oh. Look, $300. Bet you could beat him, Uncle Tim. Well, at one time, maybe, Jamie. <laughs> but not anymore, no. 
Not even for $3,000. I was thinking of a great deal more than that. Yes, I'll bet you were. Remember Seattle? Uh-huh. Uh, the champion of Ireland. Did you want me to fight this, this sharky, whatever his name is? Nothing doing. Even the word Seattle makes the bottom of my feet hurt. You could do it. No, no, it'll go wrong this time, I promise. And I want to remind you that our funds are growing terribly low again. No. Please, Uncle Tim. But, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose there's no harm in giving uh, Thunder City the once over a son of a way. Tim Donovan is a good man, and I'm sure that Jamie is safe if she's with him. Grace, you're simply getting yourself upset. <sighs> of course I'm upset. If you hadn't opened my letter, Jamie would be here now, unharmed. I suggest you go upstairs and lie down, my dear. Well, if you weren't so tired, you'd realize that I'm as anxious to get Jamie back as you are. I am not tired, and I mean what I say. You are more interested in hunting Tim Donovan like an animal than in finding Jamie. Silas, we can't afford any more bungling. I want results. Hey, Barton. More whiskey. Take it easy. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking it easy. I remember them early days in St. Louis. The bartender used to leave the bottle on the table. Now, come on, go bring us a bottle now. Settle down. Settle down. Yeah, I'm set. Thank you. Last bottle. Yeah, come on. Want me a big glass? Yeah, big glass. Well, look at the little cowboy. Give me my hat. Well, to little cowgirl. Give it. Give it to me. No, come on, I said jump. The sea jump for it right here. Come on, come on, jump for it. Uh, give the Colleen her hat. What? I said give the little Colleen her hat. Maybe you want to come and get it for a junkie. challenge Mr. Sharky Lynch for the right to fight Robert Fitzsimmons for the world's heavyweight championship. Hey! Now that, that's, that's everything in full. Now you know our deal. You're to leave town right away. Our deal is the jockey boy here to pull his punches. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I got carried away. Will you get carried away again, jockey? You're going to get carried out. Uh, yes. You uh, better leave him alone. He could beat you any time. Oh, yeah? Oh, no, 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 no. It's always been his problem. A glass jaw. Come on, get up. You did it again, Uncle Tim, for real. Yes, well, it's a pity that he won't be in the ring with me instead of Mr. Lynch. Oh. I, I wouldn't give it a second thought. I've seen the theater, and it has a wonderful curtain. I'll be standing in back of the curtain. All you have to do is back him right up to the curtain. I'll... And you win it in one round. Huh? A barge? Yeah. No, no. We are leaving this town before I get slaughtered. Look, look, you can do it. I know it. I've... Listen to me. I've seen it. I've seen him. He's like a walking old beer barrel. No, you can it. do it, too. Yeah. Sure you can, Uncle Tim. You can beat him. I mean, even without Mr. Okay. Bailey helping. Well, I'm glad you think so, Jamie. Men will toast you from coast to coast. No. Look, I remember Seattle. It won't be like the last time I'm telling you. You'll be the envy of the world. No. Uncle Tim.
right after the fight. The saloon? Right. Right. Bailey? Come on. I never could resist a long shot. Is that boy of yours as good as you say he is? Oh, he's better, Sheriff. He's better. If you want to leave town healthy, he'd better be, because I just bet my whole paycheck on him. Well, I'm going to bet mine on Carnahan. I think I've been right to I'm laying two to one. On who? Lynch. Carnahan's going to kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our promised attraction, an exhibition in the manly art of self-defense. And now, introducing on my left, the leading challenger for the heavyweight championship of the world, Lynch! And his opponent, on my right, from the Emerald Isle, the champion of Ireland, Tiger Tim Carnahan! Gentlemen, this will be a contest to the finish. London prize ring rules. Each knockdown ends the round. Now go to your corners. Come out fighting. Let's go,